All right, guys. Sorry, it's probably really close to camera. <laughs> ah, it's kind of walking around my barrel. Okay, we are on this BMW again today. I'm gonna do some major chopping today. I'm cutting the roof off this car and I'm cutting up the tub today. Uh, I'm hoping, that's my, my game plan. I forgot my piece of metal. I was gonna show you guys how I think I'm gonna do this. So, I ordered a rib nutter finally. You guys, you heard me talk about it in other videos. I am literally gonna take a piece of angle iron right here on the rocker. I pulled out all these little rubber things in this car. They're like, I don't know, they're access holes, drain holes, whatever. Um, I pulled out all the little rubber plugs and I'm literally gonna weld a piece of angle iron to here. I think it's gonna be like two by three. And I'm gonna run down all the way down the rocker. I'm gonna stitch weld it top and bottom to get some structure in this to give me somewhere to tie my Jeep body into. Um, once I get the angle iron in there, I can drill through the Jeep body into that angle iron and put a rib nut in there. Um, I probably could do it to this. I just need something a lot square. This, it has like some little drop downs and stuff. I'm gonna go around this to square this off. Uh, in between all my welds, I'll come back with seam sealer someday and seam seal it. Um, Cause that's literally how they seal up cars um, from what I can tell, um, wherever they don't weld it all the way out or they have something bolt bolted in. Uh, it keeps the water and stuff from getting in there and rusting out the car or truck, whatever you got. Um, so I'm gonna run this piece of angle iron in here. That'll give me somewhere to rib nut into and attach my Jeep body to. On the outside of the Jeep body, because my body on that Jeep is pretty rusted, I'm gonna put a piece of probably four inch by eight or three sixteenths on the outside of the Jeep body. So I will be bolting through the body and pinching the body to this piece of angle iron that I put in here. That's gonna hold the bottom of my body. Um, up here, I'm gonna have to figure out some way to attach. A lot of this is gonna have to go away. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this line right here. I'm gonna have to whack that off. Um, I've already taken out the core support for the, the top of the radiator core support, radiator support, whatever you wanna call it. I don't know what it's called. Um, I took it out, it's right there. Uh, here was my problem with it, you guys. I hated the way it looked, the grill looked on this car. Um, you can see these are the horns that were mounted on there. I was trying to fit the radiator here. It pushed the front of this out like six inches, you guys. It looked stupid. This BMW looked like a piggy pig. <laughs> um, now I've got the grill pushed back all the way against the radiator. I'm gonna have to measure here for my, I'm gonna put halo lights in this probably, or some kind of aftermarket light. I gotta make sure I stay off this radiator so I don't melt the back of it. Um, the good thing about where I, I really want it back a little further. I still think this gap's a little big, but it's not horrible. Um, yeah, I'd really like this radiator to be about there. But the good thing about where it's sitting right now, this stock Jeep hood that's really rough, when I set it up on here, it comes all the way back to right here, this line. This is where the cow part of the Jeep is gonna sit. It lines up almost perfect, you guys. I am gonna have to cut the sides of this uh, Jeep hood. See how it kind of comes up? It's going outward, and then it straightens off. This isn't wide enough here. Um, I'm gonna have to bring this out more this way. Uh, so I'm gonna change the side of this Jeep hood just a little bit, just to clear here. Um, the first thing I gotta do is get the, the roof off of this car. Then I'm gonna put the Jeep sides on to see where this lines up. See how far my Jeep hood's gotta come out to line up with that. I'm hoping that Jeep, that the Jeep body's gonna bolt to that rocker right there. So I'm hoping it'll just, I'll only have to cut a little bit of this off to get it to everything to line up. Um, same with here, when I, I'm gonna cut this roof off a little high all the way around just to get it off of here, just to pull this roof off. Uh, then I'll work on whittling this back to here. Anyways, you guys, my GoPro died, sorry. Um, I am getting the stock dash from the guy that gave me this car. Um, so we're gonna try to tuck this in underneath this Jeep cowl, um, mainly so I can mount the stock BMW gauge cluster. Uh, and I can still make this heater and stuff work because I'd like to drive this most of the summer uh, once I get it all built and together. So yeah, uh, we'll... The guy that's got it, he's out of town right now. He's going to give me a call when he gets back into town. But um, I do need, I'll end up having to cut this down to where my stock dash can still fit in here. Um, and the Jeep cowl will still 
cover part of that dash because that windshield's going to be about here and it's going to be more this angle i am going to cut it and tip it back a little um mainly because it's rusted out in the bottom um and you guys can i wonder if you guys can see that this thing tipped over the other day and shattered the windshield it was a perfect windshield and it broke which is all right because i was gonna have to take the glass out anyways um probably to repair the rust in the bottom of this window frame and some other stuff that I got to do to it. I mean, obviously the paint's really rough on this thing. It's like, I don't know, four different colors plus rusty. So I don't know. I may look for a new windshield altogether. I got some rust issues that I'm going to have to deal with eventually. But um, for now, I'm going to just try to get this together. So I know how the body's going to mount on here. I may end up putting this body on here and just saying it's too rusty to fix. And I may just buy brand new panels, you guys. I don't know. It's pretty rusty. We'll We'll see. I mean... I know if nothing else, I'm going to have to repair this window frame here. You can see how bad it is. Um, it's all the way over into the A pillar. The B pillars are rusted out. A pillars rusted out. Both sides. You can see there's a hole through the floor over there. Hole through the floor there, which most of the floor is coming out of this thing. I'm using the sides and this cowl, you guys. The firewall is coming out of it because it's going over that BMW. So, yeah. I'm gonna get that. You know what? Before I start hacking this car apart, I gotta get. I gotta finish getting a lot of these wires out, um, moving them down. I strip most stuff out of the roof. I got a little bit of stuff here, a little bit of stuff over here, um, and a couple here in the back. Um, I also gotta get these out. Uh, I think I'm gonna. I hope that this is strong enough to hold this car together so it doesn't collapse. Um, where the seatbelt mounts are, I'm pretty sure it is. So I'm gonna cut this off up in here for now. Up in here and up in here just to get this roof off so i can see what i'm working with i can start fitting this front of this jeep cowl i got to figure out where i'm going to split this jeep this way and width wise uh this is just a little bit wider than the jeep body so i know i'm gonna have to split that cowl right down the middle and widen it and obviously this is a four door that's a two door and it's a jeep so it's way shorter than this car so i think i'm gonna leave the original opening in the jeep because it lines up pretty good with this i may leave this to tie into and tie my roll cage into this also after i reinforce this um then i'll have to get another jeep body or custom make the rest of this i know they make replacement panels for right here in the jeep um, i might buy one of them to build this part of the tub i don't know i'm going to use the back half of the jeep back here uh, there's no tailgate in this jeep i'm literally going to make a tailgate with the name of this i got a name that i'm thinking about calling this thing um i'd like to see hear anyone else's names what what they think we should call this thing uh dylan has a name i have a name uh i think my wife's got a name kind of picked out uh, i'm pretty sure i'm gonna trump the rest of my family on naming it because i came up with the first name for it way before anyone else did so uh it's pretty fitting my son's girlfriend says it's an old dad joke but i'm totally good with that because i am an old dad <laughs> <laughs> i'm not really that old um but yeah comment I, I would i'd love to hear what other people have for names for this thing uh gonna be a bmw with a jeep body on it and like a rock bouncer roll cage it's gonna have like rock lights under it halo lights in it i'm gonna cut some uh where these lights mount i'm gonna cut some aluminum pieces on my router hopefully i'm hopefully gonna do that we'll see i've never cut any aluminum on it but I think I'm going to cut some rings and then bolt it in. It'll have the same bolt pattern as the wheels. Um, so it'll be like, not the same bolt pattern. It'll be a five lug uh, bolts that hold it in. Uh, that was Dylan's idea. Great idea. So it kind of matched what the car is. Um, but it'll have these aluminum rings and it'll have like special bolts that kind of bolted in. I don't know if I'm doing copper, brass, uh, might be black or blue bolts or gray i don't i don't know yet um i just have an idea in my head what we're gonna do but um as you can see i did get that that grill forward more so it looks a lot better um, once we start getting the hood and stuff on it'll start coming together i'm gonna have to end up moving this cooler i don't know what the cooler is even for i haven't even traced it back i'm maybe power steering i haven't even honestly looked it's an oil cooler i'm guessing I think that's oil. I think that's where the oil filter is and it goes right into it. So it's an oil cooler. So I'm going to have to reroute that. Uh, I may try to stick it up here. 
Um, there's already, you got an intercooler, your radiator. This must be a trans cooler in here. <coughs> yeah. So I did have to cut the, my grill out a little bit to get it to fit. Um, and these are all rough cuts right now, you guys. I'm just trying to figure out how to make this car go together as a Jeep. Um, so I had to cut the side of the radiator here, 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 and here. Had to knock out these bottoms to clear um, what I was originally doing was trying to clear this uh, horn because I was going to leave these. I didn't like it, so we switched it up. But um, we got good mounting point right here at the end of the frame. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to, once I cut this off too, I'm going to have to tie something back to here to hopefully. I'm hoping this is enough to support this car even after I cut this off because I'll replate it probably once I get it cut off where I need it or I might run a piece of like tubing down to here. I, I don't know yet. A lot of this is up in the air, you guys. It's going to be kind of as I go when I'm building it. What I end up doing. But like I said, plan today, I'm going to try to get the roof off this car. Um... I was gonna try to save the glass, but I'm, I already cracked the front windshield right here. I had that Jeep windshield up here trying to figure out what it was gonna look like. And the wiper motor's still on that windshield and it cracked it right there. So yeah, so I'm not even gonna try to save them. I'm just getting it off of here, getting it out of my shop, but I'm gonna undo all the wiring first. So let me get the wires undone. Um, and then I'll, I don't, I'm not sure, I think Dylan might come up today and help me cut this roof off. If nothing else, I'm gonna need help lifting it off. And getting it out of the shop so um, I'll probably call him to come up and at least help me lift it off so we can really start seeing what this is gonna look like we'll be able to set our hood up here and our windshield and kind of get a eyeball of what this thing is gonna look like in the end it's it's definitely gonna be one of a kind you guys I, I, I hope you're into this as much as me and Dylan are we're we're pretty jacked about this it's like it's gonna be a real Jeep that's gonna be really really fast um, yeah cuz this thing's a six-cylinder turboed and it is fast. I've already driven it without, uh, which I'll probably post that short so you guys can see it. I've driven this. I don't have a steering wheel for it. I drove it with uh, vice grips on the steering shaft right there. Just like you see it now. No doors, nothing. Um, I lost control of it because the dash fell down on my hand and I tried to turn. I couldn't turn. And I almost put it into the trees by my house. Because uh, this thing on dirt, once you give it the onion and that turb kicks in, holy crap, dude. It's it's twice what my Audi is, so this should make a sweet little Jeep, and we'll see if I can get it where they'll let me register it. I'm pretty sure I'm in Montana. They shouldn't have a problem with it, so yeah, it's going to be cool, you guys, and you know, someday I may come back and paint this, all this body. I'm talking about turning the hood into a cow hood a little bit um, to let some of the heat out. We'll see. I, I got a lot of ideas. Um, we'll see where I go. Um, this is going to take me a long time, you guys. Uh, just keep watching. We'll keep posting videos of this. We got to throw some other stuff in there. I got stuff to do on the racer this winter. Um, plow truck still needs a tire mount for the spare tire. Uh, I'd like to work on the old truck a little bit too over there. I did get it running. Um, yeah, we got a lot of stuff we're going to keep doing, you guys. We're going to kick videos out like crazy. So uh, keep watching. I'll get on this. I'll show you guys where I get when I get. So I've got all the carpet or the sound downing out of here i pulled all the wires back that i can um because i'm trying to get to the point where i can cut this roof off uh came back through here this looks like a mess you guys i know and it is a mess i this worries me a little bit but i will get through it eventually uh a lot of this stuff like this some of this runs airbags some of it runs rear defrost on the window that's i just cut the wire off too oops Anyways, what I wanted to show you, <laughs> now that I got a lot of that done, um, literally what I did, I don't know if anyone's ever pulled wind glass out of a vehicle. This stuff is, don't quote me on what it's called, uh, I think it's windshield glass wire, something like that. This is what you use to cut the rubber underneath this out so you can pull the wind or the glass out of it. Uh, I'm trying not to break this. I'm hoping I can resell it online. I, or if somebody wants it, they can come get it. Um, but literally, that's what I did. I took this little screwdriver. I poked a hole through here, through the, the whatever they call it, windshield goo, blah, that stuff. I poked it through, and then I took a section of this, this wire uh, 
and I bent it over the end of the screwdriver and I stuffed it through there. I started right here, you guys. I've made it all the way around here to here. Um, and literally all you do is you just saw back and forth. So you just pull that wire one way and then the other way as you're putting pressure in the direction you want to cut. I tried this, me and my wife tried this in our racer. It did not go so well. We made it about mm, halfway around this windshield. We shattered the windshield and it was super tough. Like I, both me and my wife, when we got done, our hands were just sore. This one's cutting super easy, you guys. Uh, I started there, it took me about two minutes to get to there. Um, and literally I just put him one hand on this side of the windshield or on the back glass and one on this side. And I'm just pulling back and forth and just using that like a saw to cut through that uh, silicone sealant, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm going to finish going around here. I'm going to actually move this other wire because I cut through it. <laughs> yeah, so this is the defrost wire. Um, I'm pretty sure most window places can solder that wire back on. So not a big deal that I cut through the one over there. I just wasn't watching. Um, yeah, so we'll get this glass out of here. And then that way I can at least chop this car off here. Get Start getting this top section off. I'm going to cut it here probably and here. I may end up trying to take this glass out even though it's cracked over there. I just don't want this thing to like... When I try to cut through with saws, I'll hit this and the window just and I got glass everywhere. The front one will probably be all right because I think it's like what they call tempered glass. It should stay together as one piece, but it'll just kind of fold up. It's still, even when it breaks, it leaves little slivers of glass everywhere. So I'm trying to avoid that. Um, that's the only reason I'm trying to take the glass out and not just throwing a freaking brick through it and being done with it. Uh, I'm just gonna pull it, try to pull them out so I don't get glass everywhere in my shop in this thing as I'm building it. I don't want to be sitting down and getting glass slivers everywhere. So it's the only reason, literally if I make it halfway across and it breaks, I'm just going to pry the damn thing out. But I'm going to try to get it out as one piece. So just so you guys know, that's how you do it. Um, literally the only problem with this stuff is it is pretty slippery. I got my welding gloves on. I'm wrapping it around my hands and just kind of pulling back and forth. Uh, a lot of people will, they have like little wood pieces that you can put through here. You kind of put it through, wrap it. Then you have a piece of wood on each side. I tried that last time and it just kept breaking the wood or the wire would break after you get like a little ways through it. So um, literally I just put my welding gloves on and I mean, it's, it's digging into my welding gloves a little. You can see right there, it's digging into my welding gloves, but at least it's protecting my hands. Um, so we'll get this cut out. I'll get this lifted out of here. Um, then we can start looking at how to take this back windage tray out of here. I think is what they call it, that piece, the back dash windage tray, I think is what, what it's called. Um, so I can see what structure's under here before I cut this off. Cause I don't want this collapsing, uh, the car collapsing this way as I cut this roof off of it. So I got this, this glass out, one piece, didn't break it, nothing. Um, I will tell you guys, this stuff, it's a lot easier if you cut more than you need. Um, because as you're like trying to saw it this way, kind of back and forth. Let me see if I can get you kind of set up here so I can kind of show you what. Um, so what I did is I'd wrap this around my gloves and then you saw back and forth this way as you're pulling. So it actually creates more of a V like that to cut through this uh, weather stripping silicone black window goo stuff. I don't even know what to call it. Um, but it's it's easier when your when your wire is a lot longer. Wow, sorry guys. Uh, when this is a lot longer, so you can reach from here all the way over to here. Same with on this side. So you're pulling this way. Um, it, it, like this is a big area to reach around, you guys. I mean, this C pillar is pretty big. So and you're trying to reach all the way to here. So the longer your wire is, the easier it is to kind of saw back and forth on either side of the window to get it out. Um, I will tell you, I went through three pieces of this. One broke, and they kind of just, to me, somewhat wear out. They don't cut as good. It's just two pieces of wires kind of woven together. Um, they just kind of wear out, or like, I kind of went around this way, and I got to a point right here where I couldn't reach, and I couldn't really cut real well. So I switched and put another one in over here and worked this way. So you, if you're doing it, you may end up going through quite a bit of this. You guys, like I said, I had three pieces that were about that long. And it took me about half an hour maybe to get that out. Uh, cut right through that though. That didn't see that. Oops. That's why that was so hard to cut. But I did get the window out <laughs> uh, in one piece. Uh, we'll see. I, I may try to sell it. Um, I'm going to get this windage tray off right now. Uh, there's three star bits in here. And then there's like some 
some studs right here they had like these little plastic things that just unscrew so i got those off i'll get this out uh, and then we can start planning our cut here here and there and we'll get this roof off today hopefully uh, is my game plan i, I got to see what the structure under here is like to see if this this back section will hold this car together when i cut the roof off of it uh it should um but we may take some measurements here to make sure um that the car doesn't collapse this way or this way when i cut it off so <laughs> we will see time will tell it's not the last thing i'm cutting off this car um i wanted to tell you so as i'm kind of going i am no wiring expert you guys i know you've heard this in videos before i'm i know enough to be dangerous and this car has a ton of wires dude it really makes me nervous i'm not gonna lie uh wiring is like uh, just a nightmare for me um but what i am doing as i'm going through like i'm looking up these numbers online figuring out what they are like this is the antenna amplifier which i believe this is the antenna and a bmw um, so I am going to keep this. I'm going to put this back on the Jeep. There's a piece that goes over the top of it that I'm going to have to find. Uh, I may just leave it like that. I don't know. But it is going to go back on top of the roll cage of uh, the Jeep when I get the Jeep put on here. So um, this is the amplifier for it. I looked it up, marked it. Um, the other thing I did, these are the speaker wires here and here for this back windage tray. I am going to put the speakers back in here. I doubt they'll be back here. I'm guessing they'll be up in the roll cage um i'll build like some kind of little box and make speakers back there for the kids in the back so or whoever's riding back there uh yeah yeah wiring man <laughs> scares me a little bit i'm a little worried about this also i know on my audi if you leave the keys in the ignition you pop this like that uh how was that it oh if you leave the keys in the ignition you have you come over here to fill your gas, it won't allow you to open this. Because it's just a push button. When you push it, it pops the lid open. Um, it won't allow you to do anything to open this. Uh, literally, when I first got my Audi, I thought it was stuck and I had to pry it out. I was going to start prying on it, then I was like, wait. I went and grabbed the keys and I walked over here this close to it, and it opened right up. So I'm a little worried about that. I'm going to have to figure out some way to keep that depressed all the time. Um... And maybe I can just eliminate it all together because I won't have this because it's mangled, obviously. Um, so maybe it won't be an issue. I just don't know what it'll do with the electronics in the car. If it'll let it start or not, it might give you a code saying, hey, gas cap's open. I don't know. Um, we're going to have a lot of codes in this car because uh, the guy I got this from has stripped a ton of stuff out of it. I'm hoping he can help me put a lot of it back together since he took it apart uh, when we start going back in with the Jeep body. So, yeah, we'll see how that turns out um but like i said if you guys are doing this like as you're disconnecting stuff mark stuff that you know you want to keep like i'm i know i'm gonna put the stereo back in this thing um so i marked my speaker wires back here obviously i don't have any door speakers or none of that um i do have a speaker that i am gonna put in the back of this this thing's gonna have a pretty good sound stereo in it or sound system in it um i got like a 12 inch rockford fosgate and an amp that came out of this old car that I had, uh, I wrecked the car. I hit a horse with it or something. <laughs> yeah, that happened. Uh, not on purpose. Uh, middle of the night, someone a horse ran out in front of me and I tagged it. So, yeah, I'm going to cut this roof off. I got the windshield out. Um, it didn't come out too bad. It, it fought me a little bit down in here uh, after I started realizing what I was doing. I was getting underneath these, this piece right here. Uh, as I was going, um, I made a longer piece so I could get my my rope or my wire in and I ran it that way and I pulled and it came right out. Uh, it did finish cracking the rest of it, you guys. Uh, I don't know, you may not be able to see it on camera, but it's spidered it everywhere. So it was already cracked, uh, not a big deal. But I'm laying this out so I know my stock dash is somewhere in here. So I'm gonna cut this off about there. I know this, I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave this pillar or not. Uh, I have a mark there that roughly where I want it, but I'm gonna cut it up here. Same with back here. I know a, this is gonna get cut off somewhere in the middle of that uh, gas filler neck. I'm gonna cut it up here. Um, same with on the other side. I got all my marks laid out here. I'm gonna chop this thing here, here, and right there. I uh, took a measurement from here back 12 inches, drew a straight line. 
I used my license plate that I was practicing some quilting on after making my tipping dies. Hopefully you guys saw my short video on that. Um, that turned out pretty sweet, you guys. I'm, we're gonna do some of this in this car, I think. Um, but yeah, it's, I made a new tipping die right there. Um, it's hardened, it's got a poly bottom. Uh, you guys probably saw that on my short video, hopefully. Hopefully everybody got a chance to see that. It, probably one of the biggest hitting videos I've, shorts I've had, so it was pretty awesome. Uh, especially because it was related to work, not just something I took out in the mountains, you know, so. Uh, pretty awesome. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate everyone that's watching and uh, watching my shorts and watching me do this. Uh, I'm hoping this Jeep will really take off. Uh, I think maybe I won't tell you about that yet. Um, Dylan's working on something else that's kind of related to this, so uh, I'll let you guys know if, if he's ready for that for me to announce that yet or not. So we're getting there though. I'm gonna chop this roof off. I'm gonna go plug my GoPro in. It's at 29%. I've only recorded a little bit today. I'm going to go get my charger. We're going to plug this in. I'm going to try to set you up so you can watch me chop this roof off. Um, I did take a measurement right here, you guys, uh, from door frame to door frame. These are straight up and down. Uh, I measured pretty much from here as low as I can get across with tape measure to these pinch rails. I want to see if this car folds in or not. It shouldn't. From what I see online, it should not fold in when I cut this roof off. But I don't know. This is all theoretical at this point. But I did take a measurement across there, so I know that this car is not going to go wonk and fold in on itself. Um, it should be plenty strong this way because it's all of its supports are down here on the floor. So, and it's got this dash bar in here. Um, this is just like exhaust tubing, but it should be enough to hold it. Uh, so I left the windage tray support in there. Uh, so when I cut this roof off, we'll take some more measurements and see if it moved. I don't think it did. It will. So we'll see though. I'm about to chop this thing. We're going to get saws all out and I'm going to cut this thing off. Then we're going to have a Jeep. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> we're about to make this bad boy topless. Um, we're going to use saws all. I got my lines marked out. I think I already showed you guys that. So we're going to get to cutting here. This 
is actually really right. Oh! All right, you guys, you just saw us cut the roof off this car. Uh, it already looks better. Um, I'm definitely getting wheel spacers. I want these tires outside the body, front and back. So I'm probably gonna put like two inch wheel spacers. Maybe I'll get different offset wheel, I don't know. I kinda like, I kinda wanna keep the BMW wheels just cause a BMW, that way people kinda know what they're getting their ass whooped by when this raggedy old Jeep goes flying by them. <coughs> um, I did want to show you this. This kind of, this is broke, you guys, but uh, I'm going to probably find this somewhere because it actually lines up very well with the grill. I should be able to cut holes on the top of my grill. This is a, the intake, so it'll suck air this way through the grill up through here. Um, it's actually, it's going to totally clear the hood when I put the hood on here. Yeah, there's... I measured it early, I can't remember the measurement, but it totally clears all this. The hood, once it's down to its level, it'll have a half inch of clearance over the top of this. I think it's actually a little more than a half an inch. Um, by the measurements me and Dylan roughly took earlier. Uh, I did cut the top off this, guys. This is not its final resting point. Uh, we're cutting this down lower. I just wanted to get the majority off to see if this car would collapse. It did not. It moved maybe it, these pillars, these V pillars, they moved in just a little bit closer, about 16th, maybe an eighth, eighth of an inch. It, it went this way just a little. Not enough to worry about. Um, once we tie the cage into here, uh, it'll be better. I'm going to get my angle iron probably next week, and I'll get these uh, rockers tied in with angle iron so I have somewhere to mount my Jeep body to. Uh, then we can really, we're going to start moving pretty quick after that, I think. Once I get. Figure out a way to get the angle iron on here and these, this Jeep body mounted to here. I think it's going to start moving pretty quick, getting the majority of the body on. I really want to get the body on as quick as possible and somewhat in place so I can start building the cage. Because the cage is going to hold this whole car together. Um, it's going to have a lot of hoops and it's, it's essentially going to be like what you see if you guys look up uh, down south like they do what's called rock bouncing it's going to have a full rock bouncer cage in this thing uh, it's going to have the angry eyebrow behind the dash it's going to have double hoops here double hoops back there i got a really cool design for the back of this thing uh, where the cage ties into the rear bumper not the rear bumper the rear pan of this thing uh, the unibody whatever you want to call it yeah, so this thing is going to be a mix of a lot of stuff. Lowrider, Rock Bouncer, Jeep, BMW. It's going to be rad. It's going to be just something that... I don't know. It's going to be definitely one of a kind. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. Dylan's super excited about it. So, yeah. I'll show you guys where I get when I get... I'm going to start chopping up the body on this Jeep. Jeep.